deepest experience of that. And one of the biggest tests um, for me of where my practice was at happened in 2005. I had been on vacation with my wife and my two children in Italy for two weeks. We came back and during the two weeks, I never got to a gym. I never got to work out. And that's was a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. So I went down in the basement where I have a little gym and I was just going to do some light working out. And I was doing that. And all of a sudden my head just exploded. I mean, there's no other way to describe what happened. It exploded from the inside. It felt like it exploded inside and out. It was shearing pain. I fell off the bench. I felt nauseous. I, I couldn't I barely see. I mean, it was, i have been treated for 30 years for migraines, but nothing like this. Somehow it was a Sunday, so it was, I didn't know, I mean, I was confused and disoriented. So my wife and my son got me into bed. I took as much Advil as I could and, and just sort of passed out for two or three hours. When I woke up, I was woozy, which is typical of it being after migraine, you feel a little woozy for a while. Right. But I was modestly okay, but still something was wrong with my body. But again, I thought it was just this two week hiatus in my little working out. The next morning at nine o'clock in the morning, I'm at the office and boom, another headache just like that. I'm at my desk and fortunately a, a retired Supreme Court judge was working for me as they were talking to me. So what's the matter? I said, I, I, I don't know. So he took me to um, Millard Fillmore Hospital and um, they asked me like, I said, oh, I, you know, I have migraines. Nancy Nielsen's my doctor. And, oh, you've been treated for migraines? I said, I've been in and out of the emergency room twice a year for 30 years. Okay. So they shoot you, they hydrate you, and they give you an intravenous, some sort of pain medication or whatever. And in 20 minutes, you're like, you know, mm-hmm. you the judge says to the doctor, I think that he should need a CAT scan. So the, the, the doctor says, judge, it's not protocol for a migraine headache. He says he's having migraines. He said, but we don't give CAT scans for that. The judge said, he needs one. And if you want me to call somebody to get this done, I'll do that, which he did. The doctor comes walking over. I guess we're giving you a, a CAT scan, Joe. Mm-hmm. And by then I was starting to feel okay, you know, because they, the drugs were working. And my wife showed up and my cousin, my brother had all come to the hospital. And, um, and the doctor said, Joe, you had what we call a thunderclap headache. It's not a migraine, it's a thunderclap headache. Uh, and we understand those are much different than the experience can be horrible. So he goes, so 20 minutes later, he comes back. He says, Joe, well, here's your problem. You've got a large tumor on the right side of your brain. I said, we're all like, Joe, what, what do you mean? He goes, yes, that's, look, at he says, he has the, the film. He said, look, at, you can see this big white, that's the tumor. He said, but that's not your real problem. You see how at the bottom here, it spirals? That's spiraling into the base of your skull. And that's why you had the thunderclap headache because the moment you started to exercise, your veins swelled just even a tiniest bit and now there wasn't enough room and boom, your head exploded. Wow. We said, wow, that's, we couldn't believe it. He says, you need to see a neurosurgeon. I said, okay. Tomorrow when I'm in the office, I'll make some calls. We'll get, we'll get the, he says, no, you need to see a neurosurgeon right now. What hospital do you want to go to? We're going to take you there in an ambulance. You know, oh my gosh. Not, even, wow. not even this gurney. I said, what, what are you talking about? I feel okay. That's because the drugs were giving you, but you're not okay. And this tumor is a serious issue. You need to be in the hands of a neurosurgeon today. Go, okay then. So in the ambulance, I began to 
wonder what was going to happen and how I was going to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And you've been practicing for how long at this point? At that time, 30 years. Wow, okay. Yeah. So The ultimate test. Right. So we see the neurosurgeon and he tells us, you got, we got to go in and we got to operate. There's no choice here. And uh, we've got to give you some relief from this tumor. He said, but we want to tell you, the area that we're fiddling around in, he goes, it controls your swallowing, your breathing, your vision, you know, your hearing, all of which may be affected. Blindness. Wow. Yeah, I'm listening to this. And he said, I have to tell you, this carries more risk of death than your normal gallbladder operation or something. Right. Well, all right then. So we'll see if I'm up to the challenge for this. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the hospital. They didn't let me go home. And they wanted to give me um, uh, can an catabolic steroids to shrink Mm -hmm. the brain and the tumor more mm -hmm. before they went in. And so during this time, I had, for the first time in my life, dealing with my own mortality. Like, wow, this could really happen. This could be the end of life as I'm experiencing it. And I wondered, I wondered, Joe, what are you going to do at that last moment when you, when, when, you know, the night before, the morning of your surgery? Are you going to just stay in the moment watching your anxiety and your fears and your love for your family and your wife? Or, or are you going to fall back on that Catholic nine years of Catholic school upbringing that you had going to church six days a week and confession and all the sacraments and say an Our Father and a Hail Mary just to hedge your bets? Is that what you're going to do, Joe? You're going to hedge your bets? I'm God's going to take care of you and you're going to go to heaven or, or he's going to help the surgeon get you out of this thing. And I didn't know. I did because the moment had not arisen yet, the last moment. And I was like, this is really fascinating. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. There was a part of me that said, well, what's the harm in a little prayer, you know, and ask for help. Uh, and there was another part of me that said, Joe, this is, this is the test of, of, wow. of being in the moment and, and of your practice and, and uh, all the things that you come to believe. Well, the good news is for me, at least, I stayed in the moment. I didn't have the least inclination to do anything other than just watch and observe myself and what was happening. They rolled me into the... Uh, operating room and of course the next thing I knew I opened my eyes and my surgeon is leaning over the, the bed and he, I hear roll up Lee say to him I'm ready he goes you ready for what <laughs> I'm ready for the surgery he goes you're in recovery wow <laughs> I said what he said yeah this, this is, we, the surgery took five hours, Joe, but you're here. You're in recovery. So I immediately go like this. My fingers, my toes. You know, I said, okay. <laughs> it was a funny moment. <laughs> I, said, I said, and you have to see the humor. Now. It wasn't crazy. But he laughed and, and I'm like, oh my God, it's over with already. Um, wow. Yeah. So they only left me with one thing. They, they took out enough of the tumor to give me the space so that I was, at that moment at least, if this tumor didn't ever grow again, at least wasn't going to go any further down the base of my skull. Mm -hmm. Then I had to go to five weeks of um, radiation. Okay, yeah. I did it five days a week. Um, that was to either stop the growth of the tumor or what they say, kill it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And fortunately that worked. 
Then I began experiencing this pain inside of my face. It was, on the one hand, it was all numb. On the other hand, you couldn't flick your hair across my cheek that wouldn't cause me to like jump in pain. Wow. So it's still like that. And that is called, no, I didn't know it at the time, I've come to know it very well, trigeminal neurologia. The trigeminal nerve comes up your neck into your face and branches into three branches, covering your forehead, side of your face, down here, okay? That trigeminal on both sides. Well, the tumor is pinching my trigeminal nerve. It's sitting on it now. And uh, as a result, 24 seven, I'm in like a constant sensation of discomfort, burning pain. And then periodically throughout the day, I'll get these like shooting pains in my eye and in my cheek, like someone sticking a needle right into your eyeball. It's the weirdest thing. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, it's not like it stays there. It's like a zoom. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, I mean, from time to time, people see me like, I'm, I'll be sitting just here and I'll go like this, sure, because it's like, it's such a shock. Mm -hmm. I still have it. It's become a friend. We, we get along together in the same body. You know, I have to make space for it. Yeah. Um, and it's not going away because I, I consulted two different <laughs> neurosurgeons who suggested that this surgery that now needs to be done to get the tumor out is that they take off the whole side of my head, including my ear. This is from two different doctors, not just one. Okay, there's a surgery like this. They take it off and they work on removing the tumor. Now they can see the whole thing. Wow. It's a two day surgery. I'm in there all day one day and all day the next day and overnight they must, they put something on it to, to cover me up. I'm out all the time. <laughs> Both times, that's it. you know, I'm, I'm happy to live with this thing. I'm not doing that. I said, what about my hearing? What's left of it? Oh, they said, well, you won't have your hearing. <laughs> you know, once we take your ear off, well, we're going to put the ear back on. You just won't be able to hear out of it. It'll be ornamental. I said, okay. No. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow.